Hey guys, how are you? It is Robin Badler from RobinBadler.com, your manifestation accelerator. Give me just one second, please, while I uh, share this video out. You know that's what I do. Give me a half a second, and we will get started. And... Done. So how's this camera? I feel like I'm looking up. Okay, that's better. Awesome. So welcome. Welcome, welcome. I'm just grabbing my notes. So let's have a really quick chat today. Um, and it is going to be quick, at least in quick in my version of quick. Um, I have to pick up my kid in, oh, I got to leave in about 20, 25 minutes. So I am going to do my best to get through this really, really fast. I don't see comments if anybody's commenting or anything, and I don't have my page up because I'm looking at my notes. So just so you know. So I'm just going to really run through this really as fast as I can. So here's the deal, okay? Um, ah, there's so many different myths out there about manifesting and and what you have to do in order to manifest and how to call things in and and it's really about um oh man the way the 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 rules they're like rules and and the way i see them is that they're they're designed not to help you at all to me as i was you know, going through my, my path and going through my process and, and and then doing the same and working with clients, what I kept discovering is everything that gets brought up to us supports what's wrong with us, right? And, you know, I don't know about you, but I'm really kind of sick and tired about being told what's wrong with me? Like, if I want to hear more about what's wrong with me, then, you know, I can, there's people in my life that I can talk to, and that's all I will hear, <laughs> you know, and I'm sure the same is for you. So it makes it more difficult to manifest. It makes us feel like, like there's so many things that have to be put in place before we even have the right to manifest, right? And I'm all about accepting yourself because when you accept yourself, and I'm not saying you have to like all of your traits, okay? We all have traits that maybe we'd rather not have, parts of our personality, thing, ways that we've learned to be that maybe don't support us and we'd like to change them. But when you accept that this is a part of who you are, then that kind of just creates this exhale. It takes a weight off your shoulders because rather than feeling like you have to change yourself, instead you're like, okay, so this is the way I am. What can I do? How can I get around this? And that's what brought me to these four myths about manifesting. All right. So the first myth that I have um, been told, taught, whatever, and I'm sure you have too, is that you have to feel worthy in order to call in, in order to manifest, in order to actualize your desires, whether it's the life you want, whether it's the job you want, whether it's the life partner you want, whether it's the money. It's like you must feel worthy and deserving of it. And you must have self-love in order to receive it. And I bought into that 
hook, line, and sinker. And I bet you did too, because it made sense. Why wouldn't that be the reason that we don't have A, B, C, D, E, and F in our lives yet? Like, why wouldn't it? It's the only thing we can possibly think of. Well, I call bullshit. Because what happened was, I don't know, one day, a couple of years ago, David and I were sitting out in our backyard and we were talking and I was just like, you know, all of this stuff that I learn is bullshit. It's bullshit. Every single thing that I have been taught, I can look at my life and find an example that disproves the, the disproves the lesson, disproves the teaching. And it was really eye-opening. And so I've spent the past couple of years really looking at it. So in terms of not feeling worthy and not feeling deserving and, and all of that kind of stuff, for those of you who have children, when they were babies, did they not love you unconditionally? I'm talking about before life got in the way, because now, you know, once once your children get older, sometimes they turn into idiots. Sometimes we turn into idiots and there's a little, you know, er, and and it's like, um, and, and even your parents, like if your parents were really mean to you, were didn't you like still as a child love them like completely and so here's the thing did did you when you received the love feel worthy and deserving of that love i bet you didn't and and for those of you who had parents that were abusive and and all of that you still loved your parents. Did they, were they worthy of that love? Were they deserving of that love? They, you know, I mean, chances are they, they weren't. Yeah, before they become joyous teenagers and they know everything. Yeah, exactly, Megan. <laughs> it gets even more fun. Um, but, you know, you, you get the point there. And, and so maybe, maybe you don't have kids and maybe you have pets right? And so you get that unconditional love from your pets. And, you know, if you really look at your your vision of yourself, you don't feel worthy. You don't feel deserving of that love. And yet you received it. And how many times have you gotten a compliment, right? So yesterday I was, when I was on video, I had my hair like this again and, and blah, blah, blah. And, and Danny said, oh, your skin is glowing. And, and I was like, oh, it's my makeup. It's my this, it's my that. I had just gotten a facial on Friday and blah, blah, blah. Instead of just saying thank you, right? And so I realized in that moment, I was like, oh, I didn't feel like I deserved it. So that does not negate the fact that a compliment was given to me, even though I unconsciously rebuked it, right? So that's, that's myth number one. You do not have to feel worthy. You don't have to feel deserving in order to manifest the love, the money, the life, the health, the, the wealth, I'm just saying that again because it rhymes, you know, the joy, the happiness, the mayhem that you desire in your life, okay? So the second one is that it has to do with blocks, right? And so this goes back to accepting yourself, right? I mean, we're all going to have blocks. The fact of the matter is there we will never... I'm not saying that it's impossible, but the likelihood of it is, is, is pretty damn close to impossible. It's, it, you know, pretty ex humanly expected <laughs> that we will not clear all of our emotional and, and energetic blocks before we die, right? And so if we spend all our time focusing only on clearing our blocks, then we would be missing so many opportunities to receive. Now, here's the thing. Even though you still have blocks, you still have 
manifested, called in, received, actualized so many wonderful things in your life. If you have a job that you enjoy, you called that in in spite of your blocks. And like if we go back to the, the not feeling worthy, which for women is really one of the biggest issues. Um, men have it too, but for women, I think it affects a, on a little bit of a deeper level. Um, but if you look at that and you have a job that you really enjoy and that you really love or any kind of career like that, if you're not feeling worthy, which is a block, and you have that job anyway, you've manifested it, you've actualized it, you've called it in, you're living it, even with the blocks, right? And so when you are working to call something in and you hit against those those negative um belief systems the ones that are that you feel are keeping you blocked look for a way around it yes work on dissolving the block okay absolutely work on dissolving the block but because it makes life easier. The fewer blocks we have, the quicker it is to move through, the easier it is to stay in flow and, and have what we want and get what we want and do what we want and feel more fulfilled. Absolutely. You know, I clear your energy when I work with you. Absolutely do this. Okay. But, or, and don't let the fact that you have these energetic blocks keep you from having what you want, having the life what you want, being the person that you want to be, being that person that you know you are on the inside. And so again, like, how did you get the job that you loved? Or how did you get the life partner? Or how did your dog or your cat love you? Or, or how did you, um, I don't know, get, get, how did somebody buy coffee for you? Like, all these different little things that we would normally say aren't the way it's taught is it's impossible to receive those because we have these blocks. Okay. And especially blocks to receiving. And so that's, that's the next thing, you know, people being bad at receiving. Oh, I can't receive. I'm not good at receiving. You have to learn how to receive. Oh my gosh. Huge boat of contention because I'm talking to you right now. You're receiving the information that I'm giving you. It doesn't mean that you're going to choose to keep it. It doesn't mean that you're going to agree with it. It doesn't mean that you are going to integrate with it. But just the fact that I am speaking to you and you're here, for, even if it's just for three seconds, you're receiving the transmission of my voice, the words, my energy, you know, you can reject it and push it back, but first you're receiving it, right? And and so it's not that we are bad at re receiving. It's that we have been taught to fully embrace all the shit that makes us wrong and reject all the compliments, all the beautiful things, all the uh, dreams that we have, all the, the things that we know inside are possible, but somebody doesn't believe that it's possible, so we put it on the back burner. But see, here's the thing. You may be rejecting it, but you still had it first. You can't, you can't reject without it entering your energy field first, right? You're always receiving. You receive the air that you breathe. You receive the blood that's pumping through your body. You're receiving the life that it gives you. You receive the day. If you woke up, you have already received. And even if you die, then you receive death. You can always receive. You are not bad at receiving. You just have not learned how to recognize that you, you, you don't embrace 
the good stuff that comes your way, the opportunities that show up. It's like an opportunity shows up for you. Here it is. It's right there for you. You've already received it. Just because you haven't taken it and brought it in, you've already received it. What you do instead is it's like, mm, no, nope, don't want it. Um, I'm not worthy. I have blocks. I'm not good at receiving. So you have to take it back. Bullshit. Okay. And then the last thing that I want to talk about really, really quick. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> but the last thing I want to talk about really quick is, um, is when they say that you, when we're told that you can't manifest when, when you're desperate and when you're afraid. And yes, again, it can make it more difficult because fear and desperation have a little bit of that, that pushback energy. However, when you are desperate and afraid and you are manifesting and you are damn well determined to grab onto what it is that you're asking for and pull it into your, into you and fully integrate it, you're going to get it. How many times have you gotten to like that last man? I, I can, st I can still, uh, so, you know, credit card bills, you know, the credit card bill is like, it's, if the last day to pay it, let's say is, is tomorrow and I don't have the money in my freaking bank account. And I'm terrified because for me, I never wanted to be late on a credit card bill. Right. And all of a sudden, like at that last moment, something shows up that I didn't expect in my PayPal account or in my bank account or, or wherever it is that allows me to at least make that minimum payment before it's going to be late. And all those times when we were on food stamps and, you know, it was like we were getting close to the end of the week and, and we didn't have enough money to, to buy more food. And we were trying to figure out how the hell we were going to make a pound of pasta last, you know, two or three more days for two adults, right? And something would show up at the last minute. You know, that's desperate. That's afraid. It's, you know, it's ter the terrified. For me, it was absolute terror. Just absolute terror. Because for part of money for me is very much about money and security and safety, right? It's very much about security and safety and, and feeling uh, protected and all of that stuff. So when that money was running out or, or I thought it was running out, I was always terrified in the frame. And so here's the thing, like, this is not, you know, I keep using my, me, 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 but I've been doing this work for a long time and I have seen this, my clients like get the same results. I have seen friends get the same results. How many times have we seen people call things in at the last minute in spite of being desperate and afraid? So those are the, um, the, the four biggest myths that that I found, I have found or discovered or whatever you want to say in the, um, in terms of manifesting and in terms of, of calling in money. So I, I just really hope that you're able to take that information and, and run with it and start bringing in more of whatever, you know, wealth is for you, whatever riches are for you. I mean, we need money to live on this planet. I mean, that's, you know, the way it is. And, and we don't just need money for today. We need money for today. We need money for when we are um, for our future, for when we are retired, we need money for, um, 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 ah, <laughs> unexpected stuff, right? And, and we want to, to, uh, <laughs> hey, Beth, and, and we need and want money for, you know, to, to share, to share with other people, right? So we've got to stop rejecting it. 
And we've got to stop pretending that we can't manifest because we're not, we don't feel worthy because we have blocks, because we're desperate and afraid. And, and because, um, oh my God. <laughs> and, and I, I'm on like such a, uh, such a roll. I just, went blank on my own last one. Oh, and be, and because we're we're not good at receiving, right? No, it, it's all bullshit. And Ebeth, you came in late. You def you definitely want to see this from the beginning. So that's it. You know, go out and use this stuff. And and if you feel so inclined, I would love for you to check out Make It Rain. Because Make It Rain is where I teach you how to take your regular manifesting process and like just keep stacking and stacking and stacking more power on top of it so that it works better, it works faster. And so that like, you know, when we go out and we're manifesting, it requires so many different steps, right? Call this person, ask that person, look this up, do this, do that, pray this, ba ba ba. You know, so, but not every one of those steps works. And so, what I'm going to do with Make It Rain is teach you how to make each one of those steps more powerful. And, and this way, if one of the steps fails, we'll call it, to get you the results that you desire, the other steps. Um, have a better chance of picking up and pulling in and drawing in and calling in what you desire. So I'm going to grab that link and I'm going to put it in the pinned comments. And with that, look at me. I am finishing with plenty of time to get out of here and, um, and pick my kid up. That's exciting. <laughs> That is very exciting for me. So that's it, guys. Thank you, like, so much for, for hanging out with me and, and listening to me babble on here. Um, <laughs> I'm just pinning the comment over in, in, cause I shared this, um, someplace else. So that's it. <laughs> I gotta get out of here. Have a great day. Definitely go back and watch this from the beginning and let's make it rain. All right. Bye, guys.